Man, I know I'm a clown for that thumbnail, but if Hector ever sees it, you know it's gonna stroke his ego and he would absolutely love it. What's going on guys, it's OmniArch, and today I'm gonna bring you a brand new video talking about the status, the current condition of Optic Gaming and what it means for Call of Duty Esports as a whole. So today is May 31st. Yesterday we saw the Modern Warfare uh, trailer launch and also I saw the the podcast with uh, Hector and Hitch and where they talked about a bunch of stuff but the, the bulk of the, the, the end of that podcast was talking about the state of optic gaming uh and how it's been handled all throughout 2018 up until now and as you guys know there are a ton of uh, tons of rumors going around uh, about optic gaming maybe no longer being a thing in the future we even saw uh big timer and embos and flame sword all get tattoos of the optic gaming logo somewhere on their body and even they said hey look we don't really know what the future of optic gaming is going to be um and i think by the time that I even upload this video, we might already have an answer, and that's really, um, it's really unfortunate, and, you know, I'm a little late to the party, I'm a couple days late to the party, but I just wanted to make this video because when I saw that podcast, man, I watched the whole thing start to finish, and I, it just didn't sit well, like, well with me th for the rest of the day. Um, I, like, I thought, I was thinking about, I was at work, and I was thinking about in the back of my head, like, man, what? What would Call of Duty be like without Optic Gaming? Would I have ever started this YouTube channel without Optic Gaming? And, uh, you know, I, I, I stopped watching Optic in uh, probably the beginning uh, or midway through Black Ops 3. And it wasn't because I wasn't enjoying watching them play. It was more because I was sick of Call of Duty. I just... After all the patches of Black Ops 3, the second half of BO3 was not fun for me. I hated Infinite Warfare. I hated World War II. Black Ops 4 is just, I can't touch it. But I remember vividly the competitive season for Advanced Warfare. And uh, man, I was all over those streams. I was watching all the live events. I was tuning into all the individual like the players with Optic Gaming. Um, of course, Nate Shot was a part of the team at the beginning of AW and you know, it's just it, it's crazy to me man to think about like even though I strayed away from optic gaming in my head like I knew that they were purchased by a larger co corporation and things weren't going well there but in my head I was like it'll be fine like you know it, it's fine it's optic gaming they're not going anywhere it's not a big deal like the content that they're making now isn't for me and Call of Duty right now isn't for me, but I'm sure that they're doing okay. It's just not for me anymore. So I haven't been, you know, contributing to the quote unquote green wall for the past couple of years, but you know, I always assume that it would be fine because you know, they've got a loyal fan base. There are people who still like Call of Duty and who like competitive Call of Duty. And of course there's still people who love Optic Gaming. So while I had moved on, I just assumed Optic Gaming is it's it's a different chapter it's for a different audience it's not for me never did i expect to be sitting here making this video um where the future of optic gaming is in jeopardy and after i watched that podcast i was in disbelief and uh, i kind of got the inspiration for the thumbnail where you know if you guys don't know steve jobs one of the founders of apple um spring of 1985 uh the board of directors uh, sided with the current CEO of Apple to remove uh, jobs from, essentially from Apple in general. I mean, he was one of the two, or one of the few founders of Apple. We're talking one of the most valuable, some, depending on when this video goes up, it's the most valuable company in the world, right? And, you know, he founded this company and he was kind of like the soul and, and, and the, the commander uh, in, of the entire thing. Even when he wasn't CEO, he was still dominating um, a lot of what was going on behind the scenes because he was just that type of figure, right? Like he had, he was the one with the vision. And back in 1985, he was actually asked to leave because people, some people in some of the higher ups in the company didn't uh, like what he was doing you know at that point Apple had already gone public so he wasn't like the only one in control anymore um, and a lot of people in the higher-ups didn't like what he had to what he was saying what he was doing and they asked him to leave and for a lot of people that was devastating and especially for Steve Jobs right he actually went on to make Pixar and you know thank God for that but 
what happened was interesting because Apple got destroyed. Uh, <laughs> Apple without Steve Jobs was abysmal. It was laughable and the end was near. I mean, they got to the point where they were like selling uh, Mac OS. Other companies could install Mac OS on their hardware, which if you know today, that's not the, really the case. You have to buy a MacBook in order to have Mac OS. Regardless, um, the company was nothing without Steve Jobs. And the fact that they even asked him to leave was, in hindsight, hilarious. Because since he came back, they did, they did the iPod, the iPhone, the iPad change the world literally change the world and it was and it wouldn't have happened if it weren't for steve steve jobs and had they not brought him back we may have we may be in a totally different world right that's just that's just one example a, a great example of what happens when somebody has a vision and they build something on top of their soul like they build it from the heart and they put their life into that project and unfortunately when you have corporate entities come in and other people whose money is on the line people who are invested in that company there are clashing visions and the hector rodriguez optic gaming versus infinite or versus corporate whatever you want to call it is another classic example of what happens when you take an organic grassroots independent unique business and kind of dwarf it with corporate funding because a lot of what goes into making a business like optic gaming work uh corporations don't understand that right and i have a degree in business administration i have a degree in marketing big business doesn't know what to do with things like optic gaming because they only know what's in the books, right? They know what they're taught in college. They know what they're taught with their degrees and their masters and their doctorates and, you know, their MBAs, whatever the case is. And those things don't work for a lot of these new types of businesses, right? Like it's hard to, te hey, hey, how do you start an esports organization and make millions of dollars? There's not a textbook out there that's going to tell you how to do that, right? And it's not like, a, it's not really like a sports organization. So things that work for traditional sports might not work for esports, right? So it's such a tricky business to get right. And the problem with that is when we now have a corporate structure taking the reins of something like Hopta Gaming, they think they know what they're doing, right? They are convinced that they know what they're doing, right? They think they know. And when you are so firmly rooted in your belief about something, you can't see that you're wrong, right? Like if your entire life was built on going to college, getting your MBA and rising up the hierarchy of, of the business world and you're in this position at you know infinite where you, you you're a higher up in this company and you have all this money and all these successes right all these so-called except successes from different ventures your entire life from the point that you were born until then is telling you that you must be right because of look at where you are but the problem is they've never done anything like optic gaming the higher ups at, at, at infinite they have no idea they have no idea what it took to get optic gaming to where it is they have no idea what Call of Duty Esports is. They don't know anything about the fan base. They don't know anything about even the business model, which is apparent at, at this point. It's laughably apparent that Infinite, they failed. And they're not gonna come out and say that, right? Infinite failed and they will never admit that. They can't admit that, right? Because there are other people who are invested in them who need them to not fail, right? If, if they say they fail, then people will quickly lose interest and no longer fund them. And that's the, that's the, that's the, the inherent nature of corporate structures is they can't admit when they're wrong, right? They can't come out and say when they're wrong because then they may no longer exist. So not only are we seeing a corporation take their hand at trying to operate optic gaming, they're failing and they can't say they are and B they're failing and they don't know that they are because they think that they know what they're doing and they feel that the original Hector essentially is in their way of, of succeeding, right? When it's in fact the complete opposite. And I mean, even a video like this, right? I'm a fan of optic. That's all I am. I have a degree in business, but I'm a fan of optic. I'm a fan of call of duty. That's all that I am. Right. And if they ever watch this video, 
they would immediately and it's not even it's not even a conscious thing they would just say oh this kid doesn't know what he's talking about he's just another one of the fans who who doesn't know what's happening behind the scenes right and their inability to take that criticism from anyone from fans from investors from people inside the co company like hector they they can't take that criticism and it shows right because optic would never be in this position if it were run properly right in the in an ideal world what would have happened right what should have happened for optic is they get investors hector handpicks a team to run optic gaming and that's it they now have a, a team that that the founder knows can handle it properly and they have the funding of a corporation that's what would it, what it would have taken for optic gaming to succeed in a corporate environment and unfortunately that isn't obviously the case and whether or not you're an optic fan it is ir irrelevant at this point right because you know there's a good chance that even if you're a fan of phase or whatever other team that you love there's a good chance that you either started as an optic fan or you at least were exposed to optic content before you even got invested in in esports right and if it wasn't optic it was probably phase but it was one of the two and and a majority of times it started with optic and it started with an aid shot and scump and those guys making content back in the day i mean in a way call of duty esports was built on the success of optic game right like if optic wasn't successful call of duty esports would have grown so much slower if at all that it it wouldn't be a fraction of what it is today and i mean that i genuinely feel that way strongly i mean correct me if i'm wrong because i i have like i said i haven't been super into um uh optic at performing at, at events right but i feel like i remember reading or hearing somewhere that there were times where optic gaming would play on main stage even if they were in the losing bracket just because the the people who run the stream knew that optic pulls in far more views than any other team so even if they couldn't possibly come in first place for that tournament they still were the ones that were on the live stream even if they were losing because of how popular they are and so that begs the question what even is call of duty esports without optic gaming again at the time of uploading this we may already have an answer we may already know the future of optic gaming um but call of duty esports will lose a large portion of its soul if optic gaming is no longer there it will be a shell of what it formerly was it will be a bunch of contracted esports stars playing a popular game and that's it right yes there will be fans yes there will be people watching but but optic is kind of where it all began there's few teams in call of duty esports that have been around longer than optic gaming and i would say probably none have been around longer than optic gaming right optic and phase are like the two oldest so man call of duty esports without optic game it, it doesn't make sense i mean mlb without the yankees right it it, it, it's just at that point it's just money throwing hands and people hitting a ball right like again baseball would be fine without the Yankees I'm sure but I'm just using that as, a, as an example to get my point across right optic without Hector is Apple without Steve Jobs and Call of Duty esports without optic gaming is it's just another esport what I'm really trying to say here is that current fans of optic gaming are fans because they have a personal connection to the players to the brand to the content creators uh and without that then yes call of duty esports will continue yes there are other teams that people will love uh but they'll love them for other reasons they'll love them because they're doing well or because of their geographical location if and when it all gets franchised based on city or state it, it won't have that same feeling because people, the fans of Optic Gaming, feel like they know these players. They've gotten to peek into their life for how many years now and feel like they have this deep connection to these people that they feel like they know and they love watching them and they love being entertained. And, and that is what makes the Green Wall the one of the most powerful uh, esports fan bases of any esport out there. Uh, and without that, then again, yes, it'll it'll continue. Call of Duty esports will continue, but that is is not something that you can rebuild in a day or a year or in five years. That that is irreplaceable, and the res the resulting scene without Optic Gaming would be far less passionate. We're at a critical point in Call of Duty's history where 
if Call of Duty doesn't turn around within this year or next year, like it's pretty much over. So if we lose Optic Gaming and esports takes that massive hit, then that's bad news for Call of Duty. I mean, it's it's that's pretty much one of the final nails in the coffin at that point. I hate to see what's happening to Hector's life work. Um, he is there's few people on the scene like hector uh i think anybody who knows him personally can can attest to that and what's being done to optic gaming is the highest tier of malevolence and disrespect by a gigantic apathetic corporate structure that is has proven to simply be there to leech off of its success and extract as much money as it can and then throwing its lifeless corpse to the side and i think that will haunt Hector for the rest of his life if that's what ends up happening to Optic Gaming. Um, but the good news is that if that does end up happening, then we'll see all of the the Optic current Optic members, maybe not the esports team, but all the current Optic members go on and do their own thing. They'll build their own brands or they'll build a new brand together. Who knows? Those guys aren't going anywhere, I'm sure. And those guys are Optic Gaming. So whether a corporation uh, thinks that they have control or not, really all they own is the name and logo. That's all they have. If they're gonna throw out what made Optic, then they don't actually have Optic to begin with. They just have the logo and name. And that's not what sells tickets to events. That's not what sells jerseys. That's not what pulls viewers. Nobody cares about that stuff if the soul behind it is gone. So I'm hoping that we see Hector regain some sort of control and he can kind of steer us out of this mess. I fully believe that he has the ability to do so. And I think that pretty much nobody else on the planet can do that so um hopefully we see the best possible scenario pull through and i'm i'm rooting for those guys even if i'm not watching competitive uh, even if i'm not tuning into optic content like i used to uh i still am you know i like i said it it sat with me yesterday all day thinking about like man where would i be without optic like would i have made this channel would i have loved call of duty as much as i did uh, you know, Optic kind of gave me a dream, right? It gave me a vision of something to achieve. What would I have done without that? Where would I be without that? Who knows? Um, so yeah, I just wanted to make this video kind of giving you guys my thoughts on this on this matter, on this uh, current event and this esports news. And um, I'd love to hear your comments down below. Do you think that I'm completely out of line? Am I out of touch? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you guys. Make sure you drop a thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new around here and if you really want to see more videos hit that bell button to turn on notifications so that way you know every time that i upload and we will be back to maybe more exciting news in the future um but for now i just wanted to get this off my chest hopefully you guys enjoyed i will talk to you guys again soon this has been omniarch peace